they're expensive. I can't afford anything anymore. Me and my wife used to do whatever we wanted before the baby came. Baby, let's go to the movies. Bam, we at the movies. Baby, let's go to Crest Station. Bam, we at the finest steakhouse. Now I'm in the grocery store making life decisions. I can't get the sweets I want no more. It's ridiculous. I had to get the tuxedo cookies the other day. Oh, so we just all balling in here? Is that what I'm hearing? Just everybody's eating Oreos? Is that what I'm hearing? I, I bought tuxedo cookies the other You understand these? These are these milk resistant cookies that you put in the milk for an hour and they won't break. I had to, I had to suck on these cookies like a hogs, man. That's, that's where my life is. I can't. I can't fly the way I want. I got miles. I'm a comic. I've been all over the world. United first class, Delta first class. But if I'm not, if I'm not flying, if they're not flying me and I gotta fly myself, I got a Southwest Airlines budget. Yes, she know what I'm talking about. The rest of y'all like, so at least you flying. That's because you've been getting tricked by those commercials. Yeah, when they tell you your bags fly free. Yeah, it's a reason your bags fly free. That's that's because you're going to stop at every city in between where it is you're trying to go. You, you got a better chance taking the Greyhound to get where you're going on time. Exactly. For real, last time I went to St. Louis from here, I flew from LAX into Chicago Midway. Right in the time zone. Back to Spokane, Washington. <laughs> then into Norfolk, Virginia. Got off the plane, spent the night at a friend's house, got up, flew to Baltimore, then into St. Louis. That is ridiculous. <laughs> but for $49, <laughs> I'm gonna be on that flight with a peanut butter jelly sandwich. <laughs> some stale pretzels and some tuxedo cookies. <laughs> For real, man. It's expensive. And because it's expensive, when I first got married, you know, and, and had my daughter, I was like, I gotta get off the road. I need to be here. It's hard to be here, though, because the money's on the road. Okay, they pay us in nachos in L.A. Because they know we'll do it, right? The money's on the road. So I had to get a, a second job. Right, but it's hard because Hollywood makes you feel bad about getting a second job. They make you feel like you're not really living your dream. So for the longest, I was like, nope, I'm staying in the struggle. <laughs> yeah, until I found out nobody else was struggling but me. Because they all have jobs. You know how I find out? I go into the Sprint store, see one of my fellow comedians. I'm like, hey, you, you, you working here? You work? You got a job? He try, try to downplay it. Nah, nah, it's just a little something, something, you know. When in Rome, I'm like, no, when in Burbank, because that's where we're at. You, you have a job. You're like, no, nah, no, nah, it's just a little something I do from time to time. It looks like something you do from nine to five, if you ask me. This. <laughs> and is that an employee of the month plaque on your desk? Let me get this straight. Not only do you have a job, but you the best? No. No, so I had to get something, so. So now I teach, I teach, yeah, I teach, yes, I teach, at jails, at jails, don't, yeah, don't, don't lose your enthusiasm, they need it too, they need it. You know what I learned from teaching though at jails? We really have to stop judging people, we really do, we do that, we judge people without knowing anything about them, right? But when I hear these stories, if my father had given me a fifth of Hennessy and cocaine at 12 years old and told me to go sell it, I'd be in jail too. Right, so the way I tell a good dude from the bad dude is by the way they talk to their girl on the phone. Yeah, I hear all those conversations. Some of these dudes be smooth cussing their girl out. And I'm not really tripping off him. He in jail, he's pretty much on par for what it is that he does, right? But who am I? I'm concerned about who's this insecure lady on the other end taking this cuss out from a man who can't do nothing about it for five to seven years? Not only is she taking this cuss out, it happens to be a collect cuss out. You understand? She, she is paying for the disrespect by the minute. That's it's a cold game, man. It's a cold game. 